Johnny English is a British spy, and he's a British spy who's not as good as he thinks he is. I won't leave you my number. And when we were planning our sequel, Johnny English Reborn, that uh, we wanted a car that Johnny English should drive. Artem Karlenko, double agent. Five years ago, he turned up here as Sergei Podovkin a member of the exclusive Oakwood Golf Club, which is where you'll be meeting him. I'm making you his opponent for the day. You booked him as Mr. Peter Adams. Thank you, Tucker. It seemed to me logical that British intelligence should have a British, or at least what is perceived to be a British brand. Ah, the Rolls-Royce Phantom. Truly the Rolls-Royce of automobiles. I suppose it does all stem from me and my personal prejudice um, is because I'd grown to love the Rolls-Royce brand uh, and I'm so aware of the qualities that I know I appreciate in it and I just thought it would fit very well with the feeling of trust, of authority, uh, but also with this little tweak of the engine and the gadgets and everything else, it, it invests it with a sense of fantasy. Armour plating, all the bells and whistles, say bonnet. Bonnet. Command accepted. Voice activation recognises only you. But a sense of, of, of credible, you know, fantasy. I can quite believe that you could make, indeed we sort of have made, a Rolls-Royce Phantom which has all these amazing facilities and all this amazing power and capability. Rolls has fitted one of their experimental engines, the 9-litre V16. Goes like the wind, only quieter. Beautiful. I'd always been an enthusiast for sports cars, for fast cars, for British cars. Um, but there's something about Rolls-Royce and the experience of driving them, which I just love. I suppose it's just the fact that they're lovely. I think lovely is the adjective that I keep coming out with. It's just a lovely experience getting from A to B. Beautiful car, Mr. Adams. Ah, the Royce. Ready, sir. Thank you. Shall we? Let's go. Command accepted. So what line of business are you in, Mr. Adams? Budovkin. Uh, sorry, yes. I'm Mr. Adams and you're Mr. Uh, uh, whoever you said you were. Well... Stop! Oh, sorry, I thought I'd forgotten something. Mm. They're not necessarily the fastest, not necessarily the most aggressive handling cars in the world, but but there's something about, it's a lot to do with the depth of the quality. That the quality is there in depth, not just the veneer of quality, the wood and the leather and the, and the things you touch, which I suppose you would expect in a car of this calibre. But it's the fact that you're so aware of the engineering quality in depth, as you're so aware of the way that, you know, the chassis is designed, the way the doors open and close, the way the whole thing is devised beneath the surface that instills you with a great confidence in it. Royce. Ready, sir. Come. The character of the Rolls-Royce Phantom in our film is that of a good companion. Obstruction detected. It is the trusted friend who will come to your rescue when everyone else has abandoned you. It's a character that has an attitude and has a function in the story. It comes to the rescue. You know, the Rolls-Royce Phantom, if you like, in our film, saves the world. Set the sat-nav for Switzerland. Let's kick some bottom. 